Hey everyone, I want to take this time to talk about the last year of Kurt Cobain's life in 1994. I plan on making a series of videos, um, one about Kurt's relationship with Chris and how that ended, um, also his relationship with Dave, and of course his wife, Courtney Love, um, and also about Kurt as a father and what could have been. But today I want to talk about Nirvana's last tour. The band struggled on the last tour. Um, Nirvana was, of course, one of the most influential bands of the 90s. And in 1994, they faced internal struggles. Kurt Cobain was battling chronic health issues, depression, and substance abuse. His stomach pain during their 1991 European tour led him to contemplate taking his own life and drugs became his refuge so on September 14th 1993 in utero was released even though Cobain had vowed not to go on any long tours unless he could keep his chronic stomach pain in check the band hit the road for a long stretch of US dates and interviews according to sources Kurt detoxed off of drugs before the tour. As Nirvana embarked on their final European tour, signs of strain were evident. Cobain was estranged from his relationships and the band. The tour was marked by tension and emotional distance. In the middle of this, Nirvana, minus Pat Smear, emerged from hibernation on the weekend of January 28th and spent three days in the studio. This was their last recording session together when they recorded the song, You Know You're Right. On February 2nd, the band left for Europe. They stopped in France to appear on a TV show and began their tour in Portugal. It was the first time Nirvana had scheduled so many consecutive dates in Europe. The band and crew traveled by bus Cobain and Smear traveled one bus, Grohl and Novoselic rode in another. According to their road manager, two buses were a matter of luxury, not animosity. The shows went really well, um, but Kurt was tired. Uh, their manager said that they were just traveling a lot. About 10 to 12 days into the tour, heading back through France, Cobain began to lose his voice. For a while, a, they used a throat spray purchased in Paris and administered before shows, and it helped ease his discomfort. After a swing through a handful of French and Italian cities, including Rome, Nirvana performed in the former Yugoslavia on February 27th, and two days later at Terminal 1 in Munich, Germany and this would be Nirvana's final show. Kurt lost his voice halfway through the performance and then went to see an ear, nose, and throat specialist the next day. Kurt was told to take two to four weeks rest. He was given spray and medicine for his lungs because he was diagnosed as having severe laryngitis and bronchitis. The last concert Nirvana performed was again March 1st, 1994, at Terminal 1 in Munich, Germany. The show was filled with ominous signs. Cobain was suffering from bronchitis and laryngitis, which, of course, seriously affected his performance. Despite these issues, the band managed to play a 23-song set, ending with Heart Shaped Box. The concert was shorter than usual, lasting only 80 minutes. During the tour, Cobain's health problems became increasingly severe. He was dealing with chronic stomach pain, which he had been self-medicating with drugs. The stress from touring made his condition even worse, leading to frequent visits to doctors in various cities. Cobain's struggles with drug addiction also played a significant role in his decline in health. After the Munich concert, Nirvana canceled the remaining dates of their European tour. Cobain flew to Rome to recuperate, but on March 4th, 1994, he was rushed to the hospital after overdosing. 
Uh, this incident was reported as an accidental overdose, but was later acknowledged as an actual attempt. The tour's abrupt end and Cobain's health issues highlighted the intense pressures he was under. Dave Grohl later reflected on this period, noting the presence of drugs and the growing need for a break. Many people close to Cobain, including friends and bandmates, tried to help him, but his struggles with addiction and mental health were too much. So there's the Rome incident. Like I said, in March 1984, Cobain overdosed. This was on a combination of champagne and rohypnol. Initially, it was portrayed as accidental, but his wife, Courtney Love, later confirmed it was an actual attempt to take his own life. Cobain's pain was overwhelming, and drugs seemed to be the only solution. After they got back, that's when they did the, uh, the drug intervention for Kurt, which of course did not end well. They were desperate to help Kurt. You know, that's when friends and family organized a drug intervention. And their goal was, of course, to get him into rehab. Um, however, uh, Kurt, his reaction was volatile and he resisted, um, of course, trying to escape. Um, he attempted to jump from a moving car on the way to the airport when Helm and Chris uh, drove together. Um, that was one of their last interactions together. So I hope you guys liked this video. I uh, just discussed a little bit about the, the incident with their, their final tour. Um, of course, Kurt was having issues with his health and drug addiction and, of course, depression as we know now. And, you know, it makes me think, like, what if they had not gone on that tour? Um, would things have ended different? You know, maybe that was just the final straw that uh, really, you know, pushed him over the edge. Um, but, you know, we'll never know. I hope you guys liked the video. Um, Stay tuned, um, and I'll be putting out another one soon.